Uh, hi everybody, I'm going to share a little video showing off how to use um, this new nodal setup I'm sharing called, I'm calling it Toothpaste. And I just want to walk you through setting it up, what you can do with it really quickly. Um, so let's just, let's just do it. Um, so I'm just going to make a, a little path, a little extruded spline thing. So we've got a little polygon there and I'm going to uh, make a spline. So let's just, uh, let's just do sketch and make a spline here in the second layer. And let's just, we'll just do something like that. I guess, um, and let's go ahead and rail extrude that along the along the spline. So rail extrude. I want uniform lengths. Uh, I want to go ahead and give it sixty. I think so. That seems pretty good. Um, for some reason, I don't like what the rail extrude did on this last polygon. It dumped it in odd angles. So I'm just going to get rid of that one. The rest of this looks pretty good. Um, I'll have because I deleted that. I'll ha I have two or four points just floating there in space. I'll get rid of those. And really quick, I'm just going to check the point order of this just to make sure it's good. I know it's good, but I'm just going to make sure. So, uh, so you po check the point order. You have point selected, and you hit I. Uh, what you want to see is basically that these are going up in increments of four, which is the number of of uh, vertices I have in, in each loop. So and it sure looks like they're doing that. There don't seem to be any jumps. And just do um let's make it worse. We'll just just hit edit all there and you can see it in the window. Uh, you can see that it's two, six, ten, fourteen. And this this is exactly the the way it's supposed to look. So so that's a nice point order. So I'm satisfied with that shape. Um I'm gonna save that. I'll just save it as test. Uh, and I'm going to get rid of this guy. We don't need him anymore. So I'm going to make a little a little rocket that can fly along that. So let's start with a box. Actually, I want to make this one the z-axis. So I'll make a box. Stretch it out like that. Put it at the end. Uh, do a subdivision like that. So divide, bring those together, pull those out a little bit. So let's call that our rocket. So let's just do that. Um, it's not really a rocket, but it'll do. It'll do. So here's our cheap rocket. It's more like a bullet, but we're calling it a rocket. So I'm going to go ahead and name these layers so that I can identify them later. So we'll call this rocket, rocket, and we'll call this smoke. Uh, so let's put a subdivision on that too. So now I have two layers, one thing and one rocket, and I'm going to bring those into layout. Sure. Uh, so let's make colors on this. Let's make it let's just turn on the smoothing. Yeah, that's fine. So there is our rocket and here is our path. And we're going to use the nodal setups to make the rocket fly and leave this path after it. Um, I'll show you how to do that. So let's start by taking this nodal display, displacement and putting it before subdivision. That's what we want to do. We'll go ahead and put it actually before bones as well. So I opened it up and I'm going to import nodes. And let's see, I got them here, but I want to, I wanna, all right, well, fine, they're right here. So what we want is toothpaste. So this is what you get. Um, it looks kind of like a mess, but really it's all in here. This is just some values, like this is an item ID, and here is the item info, and here is a vector scaler that selects the Y channel. Like that. So that's all that does. But here's where all the magic happens, and this is kind of a, a mess on the inside and, and even other ones inside there that are also messes and so it's, <laughs> it's a real real mess in there uh, so we'll just set it up it's pretty easy to set up you want to take the point index put it in here and you need to set the number of points in the object let's go back to modeler and see what the number of points is so to push the w 
this is the, and we're talking about the path here. So the point statistics, there are 240 points, and each row has four points. So knowing that, let's set this to 240. Let's set this to four, it's already four. And let's go ahead and make a null that we can use as a controller. So let's make a null, call it controller. Call it rocket controller. Rocket, I say rocket controller. And let's make a little animation on it, starting maybe here and going up. So say, I don't know, 1.9, that's what we'll use. So we'll use a oh, rocket controller is already selected there. Okay, so that is the start. So we actually want this on the end controller, so rocket controller. Uh, let's make another controller. Call it smoke end. Let's, let's animate this one as well. Actually, we'll animate that one later, but I'll set it up with smoke end here. So, so wait, rocket controller there, and the start is smoke end. Um, yeah. And the rest of these we'll leave as is. So I've got all that set up. I plug this in here. Something you can see something happened in the background already, but not exactly what we want. And the reason is it's because we have this set to displace so and we need a set. So now if we do the slider, you should see uh, the path already moves a lot. So it starts a little late. So let's let's grab this guy and just to just move it up a little bit in the so we'll move it up there. So that's pretty good. Let's just move this guy out of the way so we don't have to think about him for a moment. So that's that's that. All right, now let's let's go ahead and get this guy to fly along the same path. So to do that, you open the motion op options and you add a nodal motion. You open up your nodal motion and you import another node. So you import nodes and you do toothpaste motion. So got that one. Looks kind of similar. It's got the same sort of stuff, but it's not exactly the same. So let's set up the same things. So, so what we're talking about now is this, this, this refers to the object which you which one you want to follow. So the item to follow is going to be test smoke. That is correct. And we want the number of points in that object, which was 240, if I remember correctly, and the points in the profile, which was four. This thing is going to be our controller. Let's go ahead and set that to the same rocket controller right there. So. Now you don't have to use these nodes. You can just you can plug in any scalar. You can just make a scalar and and add it in and just you know do that and then has envelope the scalar if you like. But I I I, th I like using nodes for this or no, nulls and so I just set it up using nulls. So and it's all and I I like the Y channel up and down makes sense for a for a, a switch a slider for me. So I've got it on up and down. <coughs> um, yeah. So then you've got to take the item position, plug it into the item position, and the item rotation, plug it into the item rotation, and the position in the position, and the rotation to the rotation. And if I've set everything, the offset is zero, zero, zero. We're not going to use this offset. Um, so I've done, I've done everything correctly. The yeah, there he goes. Oh, he's backwards, however. <laughs> So we could we could fix that in in Modeler, but I'm actually not going to fix it in Modeler. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a clone of that guy, and the clone I'm going to remove the nodal motion. Um, I'm going to set this at zero zero zero. I'm going to replace this guy with a null, and I'm going to call it Rocket Null. Rocket Null. So now I'm going to take this rocket and parent it to the rocket null. Now I, I have I do I'm going to turn off parent in place for this, and I'm going to take the rocket wherever the, the test rocket. I'm just going to put it under the rocket null, and it'll jump right over there. Now we can just rotate the rocket underneath. Let's go ahead and do this at frame. No, we'll do this do fixed key here. So let's say 180. Looks it looks completely reversed. And looking at it, it sure looks like we might want to move it back a little bit. So let's just move it back like that. So now it's just a child of this null, and the null is what is following the the 
the thing. So that's it. That's all you got to do. Um, and as you can see, when it finishes the path, it goes back to whatever key, key, key keyframe positions there were. Uh, and this end one, the smoke end, we can just, we can also, like, let's say we don't want this smoke to last forever. Let's say right about here, let's key this. Now let's just move it up. You can see now, now the smoke itself disappears too. So, oh, I have it in fixed mode, sorry. All channels. So let's go ahead and bring it up there. And this one, now, now I've set it up on here. So let's just bring this down here. So, so now you can see, yeah, it follows along. And this is adjustable as much as you want. You can add a, uh, you can add displacements to it afterwards to make it more cloudy. Um, but this is the basics of it. Uh, it's very simple to use. Um, the the rocket you don't have to have the rocket follow exit at the beginning. You could have a you could have a road being built and a car on top of it, or you could have a bunch of like slime and Pac Man coming and eating it up. It's all up to you. Um, that's how it works. Very simple. Um, there you go. Thanks for watching. Oh, uh, and I'll just show you where you can find it. Sorry, didn't want to forget that. So let's go to page. You can find it on my website, htools.net, for this sort of crap. And it's down here in toothpaste. And the downloads are here and here and here. And there is some more instructions on how to use it. Just step by step, what I've gone through here. If you need more information. Um, and I've also updated the limit slide node a little bit so that it also, you can do a start and an end instead of just a start. Uh, so it works more like the toothpaste node, but it still, it still clips. Uh, it still makes a nice hard edge like you can see here. Uh, that's that. That's all. That's what I got to share today. So thanks a lot, everybody. Bye.